grain growers, advisers and research scientists from either side of the Queensland-New South Wales border travelled to Gundawindi for the 2020 GRDC Grains Research Update. Many attending this update session rely on wheat for their livelihood, whether they breed it or grow it. At the University of Sydney Plant Breeding Institute at Narrabri, cutting-edge wheat pre-breeding work is being conducted by scientists such as Richard Trithoen and Rebecca Thistlethwaite. And at this update, Richard gave a presentation on breeding for heat tolerance. Now, we all know that high temperatures impact crop yields. We know that. And at Narrabri, over the past eight years, we've been running extensive dates of planting experiments. And these extensive experiments have allowed us to estimate yield loss. And we estimate that for every one degree rise in average maximum seasonal temperature, we're seeing between 250 and 400 kilogram yield loss. And when we see heat shocks at meiosis to flowering, we see a reduction in grain number, as most people, it makes sense that that would be the case. And when we see heat shocks during the grain filling period, we see a reduction in grain weight. We need to have a relevant and effective and repeatable phenotyping strategy. Absolutely fundamental. Without that, we go nowhere. And I emphasise the relevant here. So we developed, over a period of time, a three-tiered scheme for phenotyping for heat tolerance. Stage one involves date of planting trials. And to ensure these lines are only impacted by heat stress and not water stress, irrigation is used. Stage two sees those lines that show a level of heat tolerance exposed to a temperature shock delivered by heat chambers to confirm the initial response. Stage three involves the application of a controlled heat stress in the glasshouse to understand what's happening. We calibrated this over a three year period using a fixed set of germplasm. And these are the results. We ran these experiments in triplicate plots that were replicated. And what we found, and this is very pleasing, a consistent reduction in yield under the heat chamber, but no difference between the ambient and the plot that did not have a chamber. It also told us that what was driving this was grain number. There was a significant reduction over that period in grain number, and that was largely driving this change in yield. Now, when, once we've been through the heat chambers, we go off to the controlled environments, and we look at floral biology, we look at the impacts of temperature on pollen in particular. Heat stress can have an enormous impact on pollen. In this example, a heat susceptible variety exposed to heat shock had two thirds of its pollen rendered non-viable. If we can introduce a gene for enhanced pollen viability under heat tolerance, if we can induce, introduce another gene um, that uh, let's say maintains grain weight under high temperature, then all of a sudden that sowing window just gets a little wider, even though the conditions are becoming tougher for the grain grower. Update delegates were also told the success of this phenotyping strategy was also due to a genomic selection strategy for heat tolerance. And the formula looks like this. So we have reduced the cycle time from cross to cross from six to seven years to two to three years. So all of this depends on our training population, absolutely and fundamentally. If we don't get the training population right, that initial population upon which we base all our predictions, then we're going to go nowhere fast. Now, because we have an extensive genetic profile of all that material, we can combine the genetics and the field responses and the chamber responses and the greenhouse responses to calculate a genomic estimated breeding value. So this is a, 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 the value of that germplasm to a plant breeder who's interested in heat tolerance, if you like. So how are we estimating our genomic breeding values? There are two models. There's a baseline model, but there is a more sophisticated model, and this is where Hans Datweiler and his group, they've integrated a genotype by environment interaction term into the estimation of genomic values. And we then look at predictability simply as the correlation between the GBV and yield. We then take those lines with the highest breeding values and we test them in Western Australia and in Victoria 
just to confirm that these responses are transferable across environments on the basis of that breeding value. And what we see is a predictability when you look at that correlation of between 0.3 and 0.5, and that is good. And what is also interesting is this more sophisticated model. Almost in every instance, it gives us a better predictability. Better predictions, better germplasm. A weighted index that includes these predicted yields and other data is used to screen and select from these pre-breeding lines. Lines that perform very well when you sow them optimally and maintain a yield when temperatures are high. That's what we're looking for. That's the focus of our program. This is from last year, 2019, and we're looking at yield under late sowing at Narrabri versus yield under optimal sowing. And what I've done here, I've put in green the lines, these are the new lines that for the first time are in trial, were in trial last season that came through our crossing program that was based on GEBV alone. So these have never been phenotyped. These lines have never been phenotyped. They were developed simply and selected simply on the basis of GEBV, remember that. And yet, up here in the top quadrant, we have a number of these lines that are as good as or better than the varieties and they've never been selected for a phenotype, just developed on the basis of the breeding values. I think it's working. Based on the data collected, Richard Trethowen has rated the trialled cultivars in order of heat tolerance. Based on our experience and, and our dates of sowing, our multi-environments, our heat chambers, come up with this type of ranking. So, some key messages here. I actually think that Australian wheat cultivars, wheat varieties, are already heat tolerant. Wheat breeders over many years have, just through empirical selection in the environment, have produced heat tolerance in our material. But we've identified stuff that's even better, and that's what our wheat breeders need to access. What we're seeing works in other parts of Australia, and I think that's a really key issue. And genomic selection, combined with a, a broader plant breeding strategy, a pre-breeding strategy, is effective in identifying new material. And I'd just like to acknowledge a bunch of people who have helped out here, including uh, AGT and Intergrain, who have helped with identification of some of the materials and have helped with some of the testing. Thank you very much. Richard Trethowen from the University of Sydney's Plant Breeding Institute at Narrabri. And this video is one in a series of update videos recorded at the 2020 GRDC Grains Research Updates. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.